for those of you who need to replace the little optical encoder that's inside this motor right here, this little plastic cover on it, I'm going to show you guys how to remove everything and you'll get access to it and I'll replace it and we'll try it out. First things first, you're going to have to loosen up, you're going to have to remove all of these connections from the uh, circuit board. I already loosely disconnected them for the purpose of this video so I can just simply remove these out. Remove these out. There we go. So once that's disconnected, I'm going to take a Phillips screwdriver, loosen these two top screws, then flip it over. There are four screws right here. Loosen those. Loosen these up. So once you have these these bottom four screws undone, you can flip this thing back over. Remove the top two screws completely. This one. Now you can take it out. Careful because it's still connected. So once you removed all the screws, disconnected all these wires and all that, you're gonna take this black cap off. Now you can either pinch it at the sides here and here, pitch it down like that and lift. You can take like a flat flathead screwdriver or a I don't know a knife or something. I'd recommend a flathead screwdriver. Stick it in there and pop it off from each sides. You can even use some uh, needle nose pliers and grip it as well as you can and slowly wiggle it off. Okay, so here it is. This piece right here. It's a bit of a pain in the ass to take it out, so you want to grip it like this and just wiggle back and forth. It'll come out. It's going to be a bit of a struggle, but it will come out. Just kind of pinch it. There we go. So once you get the cap off, set that aside, we are going to loosen these two screws so we can remove this little circuit board. Be careful because, I don't know if you see that, but there's this little white washer thing. Make sure you do not lose that. Like I just did. <laughs> Sure you don't lose that. Take the other one out. Oh crap. <laughs> Make sure that doesn't fall but then get scratched. Well, that's good. Here's the important part. This piece, this little wheel thing, I'm going to take it out. This goes in between here. It goes in this little slot. And there are two, I believe these are infrared sensors. And this wheel that I have in my other hand, it's in there and it slides and it reads and everything. And that's how your steering wheel works, basically. But this is the part that's really important. I'll leave pictures in the description below so you guys can get a better view. Because so, I don't know if you guys see this. But my little optical disc encoder, that's what this is called, is cracked. There's one big crack here. There's two little ones right there. Now, 
See, I don't know if you see that when I pull it apart, it's completely cracked. This is why the Logitech G25, and I'm not too sure if it happens on the G27 as well, but this is why sometimes your calibration, your steering wheel calibration, just doesn't work. It'll be like shifting to the left or to the right constantly as you, as your uh, G25 or G27 is on, and you'll get a uh, blinking light on your uh, gear shift or on your shift stick or whatever. Possibly because it's this. Uh, I don't. I'm not too sure how high of a percentage, but I'm leaning towards this. I've been searching online for days, some uh, for days in the past, back in January, and I found out that this is what this is why it happens. So for those of you who are you know out of warranty like I am, and Logitech is not doing anything about it, there is a solution. That you got a few ways. You can actually try to glue your crack. They got right here or whatever break it is you can try to glue it um i tried and i couldn't really get it, it still didn't work <clears throat> um another option is to try to find a old mouse from a, a computer uh, one that has a ball underneath it instead of the optical laser thing uh, usually it has two of these um, they are slightly different. You may get lucky and you get one that's exactly like this, but these, there's little tiny holes in here, and there's about 60 of them, I think, in here, if I counted correctly. Um, it's got to be 60. I'm not too sure. Don't quote me on that, but that's what you need. You need something exactly like this. Now, if you can't glue it, if you don't have a replacement from an old mouse, computer mouse, you have one final option which is a bit on the expensive side, but I think it's worth it. Right here, my other hand, is the exact same thing, but it's made out of brass. Now, it's from a company out in Thailand. It took me about three weeks, maybe a little, maybe slightly longer than three weeks, uh, to ship it to Canada. Uh, you know, maybe maybe a week less to the United States. Uh, when I have when I had things shipped in the United States, it was a bit quicker. But this won't break. It's made out of brass, so it's the exact same thing. It's a replacement. Now it's thirty seven dollars American via PayPal. Um, I'll leave a link in the description below so you guys can check them out. Um, I just got it this morning, um, so that's it. Just Put this on there. Put it. In, put this thing back inside like that, and that's it. Your your Logitech should be working perfectly again. Definitely check these guys out. It's super awesome. I'll leave pictures of it in the description below as well, so you guys can check it out. But uh, yeah, the only crappy part is that you had to wait quite a while. But I'm a fairly patient person, so. Just, you know, contact these guys, see what they got to say. Um, their customer service is awesome, in my opinion. Um, I was shooting emails back and forth constantly, and they're super responsive. So, yeah, definitely check them out, and that's it. So, let's put this back together.